Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. I'm guessing you're here because you want to extend the runtime on your power station. Now there are power stations that have dedicated expansion batteries, but they are expensive and a lot of times they don't have any output or input ports on them, so you can only use them for one thing and that's to hook to your power station. Well, what if you use your own batteries? Here on the table I have a 48 volt server rack battery, I have a 12 volt battery and I have a 24 volt battery and I wanna experiment with four popular large power stations to see how these batteries work and if you can truly extend the runtime using your own standalone batteries. Now the concept behind this video is fairly simple. Let's say you have a large power station, the state of charge is near 0%, it's about to shut off, and you wanna keep running your appliances. Well, let's say there's a power outage, so you can't charge up via AC power, solar is not available because it's dark or it's cloudy outside, and you don't want to run an AC generator because you don't want to make that noise and bring attention to yourself. So if you have these batteries laying around, how fast is it going to charge when you plug them into the charging socket on your power station? Now the benefit to a standalone battery is that they are fairly affordable versus a power station and also you can use them for other systems in the future. You could build a larger DIY setup using batteries. Now the key part in this video is what happens with different voltages and how fast does it charge with a 12 volt battery versus a 48 volt battery. So let's go ahead and do some testing on four different power stations to see how fast they charge. Now in the first charging demo, I wanna connect the 48 volt server rack battery up to the Bluetti AC200 Max. Now there are actually two charging inputs on the Bluetti AC200 Max. This is the solar charging input we'll be testing with first but I also have the Blue Eddy charging enhancer that we'll plug in here to get dual charging. So let's see what we're getting with this one connected up. Now looking at the screen, you can see we're getting 780 watts charging input when we have the 48 volt server rack battery connected up. Now what I wanna do is connect up my Blue Eddy charging enhancer. You can see I have an XT90 connection over here and I have on my other connection to the battery, this XT90 to Anderson adapter that I've made so I basically connect this up here and then I can plug this into the charging enhancer and we can let that do its thing. Now I've gone ahead and plugged in the Blue Eddy charging enhancer to see if we can get double the power. So it just clicked on. Let's see what happens. Oh, I saw 700 watts on each one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the alarm. Interesting, error code eight, adapter over current. Now if you Remember, just briefly, it showed 700 watts going in there. Now that's pretty interesting because the Bloody Charging Enhancer is limited to eight amps, but maybe this battery can source so much power that it's drawing too much current when it's turning on. So pretty impressive results, up to 780 watts with the MPPT solar charging input, but we did have issues trying to use this with the Bloody Charging Enhancer, so just keep that in mind. Now I also wanna test with a 24 volt LFP battery setup. Now I recently purchased these K2 Energy lithium iron phosphate batteries from batteryhookup.com. They have all sorts of batteries. Now these are wired together in parallel so I can get a little bit more amperage from them, but we're gonna connect them up to the Blue Eddy and see how many watts we get. So with the 24 volt battery connected up, we're getting 211 watts charging input. Now keep in mind, we are at lower amperage input limits because we're charging at a lower voltage. This is the car charging speed. So 211 watts if you're using a 24 volt battery. Now, of course, you don't have to go out and get a 24 volt or 48 volt battery. You can also extend the runtime of your power station by using a 12 volt battery. This is my Dr. Prepare 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Let's see how many watts we're getting with this connected up. With the 12 volt battery connected up, we are getting 105 watts charging input. And this is because we're hitting the eight amp limit Remember, the lower the voltage of your battery, the slower your power station is going to charge. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions about using the Blue Eddy charging enhancer with a lithium iron phosphate 12 volt battery. So I've gone ahead and connected up the Blue Eddy charging enhancer to this battery here, and I also have it plugged into the MPPT solar charging input. So let's see how many watts we're getting with both plugged in. So with both sources connected up, we're getting 100 watts from the battery and we're getting around 150 to 160 watts from the Blue Eddy charging enhancer. So quite a bit more power if you have both connected up. So if you have the Blue Eddy AC200 Max, now you know how many watts you should expect with a 12 volt battery, 24 volt battery, or even a 48 volt battery. Now, if you throw the Blue Eddy charging enhancer in, you can get quite a few different combinations as well. So pretty cool to see all these different charging options. Let's go ahead and move on to the next power station. Now the next power station that we'll be demoing with all these batteries is the brand new EcoFlow Delta 2 Max. Now this has lithium iron phosphate batteries and dual charge controllers. 
So let's show you guys the back to break down each charge controller. Now, as you lift up this flap right here, you get both charging ports. Now these take 11 to 60 volts DC up to 15 amps. Each one will do 500 watts. Now just take note, you do not wanna go over 60 volts here. Luckily, our 48 volt battery tops out right under 60 volts. Now to get the fastest charging speeds, I will be using these MC4 charging cables from EcoFlow that have the XT60 I connection. So this will allow us to go up to the higher amperage input limits. Now I've gone ahead and connected up the 48 volt battery to the first charge controller. And looking at the screen, you see we're getting 500 watts charging input. Now I wanna go ahead and connect up a second connection from the 48 volt battery to see if we can hit the full thousand watts input. Now I've gone ahead and wired up both connections to the charge controllers on the EcoFlow Delta II Max, and we are getting a thousand watts charging input, which is the peak charging speed that this power station can handle. Now what about 24 volts? Now I've gone ahead and connected up the 24 volt batteries to the EcoFlow Delta II Max. Now just keep in mind, these can't source a ton of power, so I only have it connected up to one charging port. We're getting 365 to 367 watts input. So if you had a 24 volt battery that could handle a lot of power output, then you could dual charge it by connecting up both charge controllers. Now I also wanted to test with a 12 volt battery on the EcoFlow Delta II Max. I connected up to one of the charge controllers and we're getting 179 watts charging input. Now remember, here we're using the XT60i adapter, which kind of ignores voltage levels and goes straight to the peak amperage input of 15 amps. Now you'll want to be careful if you're trying to do this in your vehicle using a 12 volt socket, you're going to blow a fuse, but this battery here can source this power without any problems. So that's why I'm doing it here. Now what about dual charging from a 12 volt battery? Well, I've gone ahead and connected up both charge controllers. You can see we're getting 344 watts charging input we're pulling around 30 amps from this battery, which is just fine. So you can charge pretty quickly with dual charging from a 12 volt battery. Now, I really like the flexibility of having two charge controllers on the EcoFlow Delta II Max. For example, right now I have connected up to the 12 volt battery and the 48 volt battery at the same time. Now with both power sources plugged in, one to each charge controller, we are getting around 680 watts charging input. So you can charge this fairly quickly even at different voltages because each charge controller acts independently of each other. Now, what about the EcoFlow Delta II? Now, this is the smaller version of the Delta II Max, but it should still get very similar performance to the larger version. Now, on the back of the EcoFlow Delta II, there's one charging port good for 500 watts. You can see it goes up to 60 volts and limits at 15 amps. So instead of getting a thousand watts charging input with multiple sources, you can charge from one source and get 500 watts. Now the next power station that we'll be testing here in the video is the Anchor Powerhouse 767. Now I use this power station daily as a UPS for my home work setup, and I'm excited to see how this does with the 48 volt battery because I've never connected one up to it. Now on the back of the Anchor 767, you have an XT60 charging port. Now if you have higher voltage going into this, 32 to 60 volts, it's gonna charge at 20 amps, and it has a limit of 1000 watts. So let's see if we can hit that 1000 watt limit. Now we just connected up the 48 volt battery and you can see guys, we're getting a thousand watts charging input. So it's really nice to see the peak charging speed with a server rack battery. Now what about connecting up a 24 volt battery to the anchor power station? Now I've gone ahead and connected up these two batteries to the charging port. We're getting 230 to 240 watts charging input. So you can see we're hitting the 10 amp charging limit on the power station, which is as advertised. Now, if you wanna extend the runtime of your Anchor power station using a 12 volt battery, when you connect it up, you're gonna see around 118 to 115 watts charging input because we're hitting the 10 amp limit. Now to recap the performance for the Anchor 767, I really like the high 20 amp input limit when you're using the server rack battery, it charges at a thousand watts, but because there's only one charging port and it's limited to 10 amps at lower voltages, we're kind of limited to 100 to 200 watts when using a 12 volt or 24 volt battery. Now the next power station that we'll be testing here in the video is the Pecron E2000 LFP. Now this has two charging ports. Let's break down the specs on each one. Now the charging ports on the Pecron power station are aviation style connectors. There's these two ports here. They support 600 watts each. Now the voltage is 32 volts up to 95 volts and they have a 15 amp charging limit. So let's connect up one of these to the 48 volt battery first. Now I've gone ahead and connected up the 48 volt server rack battery to the first charging port. Now this is the adapter that comes with the power station, it has MC4 adapters. I then adapt from MC4 to Anderson and it connects up to my battery. 
So with the 48 volt battery connected up, we're getting around 518 watts charging input. So a little under the 600 watt limit. So let's go ahead and connect up the second charge controller. Now it appears I ran into a little bit of a bug here. So I connected up this other charging port, but watch what happens when I plug in the second charging port. Instead of going up to like a thousand watts, it goes down to, you know, negative two, negative one, and it will not charge with both of these plugged in at the same time. It'll charge from one, it'll charge from the other, but not both at the same time. Now my guess is that it does not like having the same battery connection on each port. So maybe if you had two separate batteries, you could connect one up to each port. I'm not sure. Now we'll go ahead and test the 24 volt and 12 volt batteries to see what we get. Now the first thing that I wanted to do was to connect the 24 volt batteries up to the larger charging ports, but you can see we're not getting any charging input because the voltage of these batteries is too low. So we're gonna have to connect them up to that 100 watt port up there but just FYI, it's limited to right around 100 watts, so we're not gonna charge very quickly at these lower voltages. Well, now I'm using the 5521 charging port with the 24 volt batteries. We're getting 111 watts charging input, so not super impressive even with 24 volt batteries. Now, the final test on the Pecron E2000 is me connecting up this 12 volt battery to the 5521 charging port, and you can see we're getting around 69 to 70 watts. Now, it's taken literally five minutes for it to get up this high, and I don't think it's gonna go any higher. So 70 watts charging at 12 volts. So quite a bit less power than we've seen on the other power stations. Now I will point out that this is a pre-production E2000 and it did have some issues with the charging and such. And they've released, I think three versions since then and they fixed a bunch of these things. Now just FYI, there's no smart app connectivity on the E2000. So upgrading the firmware is not possible. The only way to get the newest version is to purchase the newest power station from Pecron on their website. So what did we learn from all that testing? Well, basically the lower the voltage of your battery, the slower your power station is gonna charge. And then if you have a higher voltage battery, as long as it doesn't go over the voltage limits of your charge controller, you should be able to charge really, really fast. And that's the benefit of having a 48 volt battery or even a 24 volt battery because they charge a lot faster than a 12 volt battery. Now connecting your batteries up to your power station is very easy. Now on each battery, you have a main positive and negative terminal. Your goal is to connect the main positive and negative terminal of your battery to the positive and negative input on the DC charging port of the power station. Now I did that with my 48 volt battery by having ring terminals on the main terminals here. And then I used 12 gauge wire. This is really flexible silicone wire. I will include some links down in the video description if you're interested in using the same parts as me. And then I would also recommend having a fuse on the positive line. So that if something goes wrong, you'll blow the fuse instead of damaging the wiring. Now the last thing that you'll need to think about is how you're going to adapt from the battery wiring to the power station charging port. Some use Anderson PowerPole, XT60, some have barrel plugs. So it might be smart to just use the charging adapter that comes with the power station. Usually it's MC4. So you could crimp MC4 on this end and then it would just plug in like a solar panel. So lots of different options. Check out the links down in the video description because I will have some options down there. Now using standalone batteries to charge up your power station does have a few obstacles. For example, you're basically just taking the battery and dumping power into your power station. There's no communication at all between the battery and the power station. There's no way to sync up the power automatically. You will have to charge these up on your own using either a solar charge controller or a dedicated battery charger. Now I do have a thousand watt solar array on my shed roof and I did test charging up this 48 volt battery with a charge controller. Now this FF or charge controller that I have is compatible with 12 volt batteries all the way up to 48 volt batteries. So it is nice to be able to have a charge controller that can charge all these batteries here on the table. Now when I connected that up, I was getting around 600 to 700 watts charging input on the EG4 here, and that was in late afternoon. And this can support up to 5,000 watts of solar charging input. So if you have this large battery, you can actually charge this faster than actually charging your power station. And then maybe you could have that connected up to your power station all the time. I mean, there's lots of different options. I'm just kind of throwing out the options here on the table so you guys can understand. These aren't perfect, but they are affordable. Now, speaking of affordable, one of the best options for a server rack battery is the EG4 lineup from Signature Solar. Now, Signature Solar is located in Texas. You can get a hold of them over the phone or through email. 
It's been a really good experience. Now I purchased this battery two months ago with my own money. This is not a sponsored video. This one MSRP is for $1,700. You can often find it cheaper than that on their website. But this is the upgrade version. It has the screen that shows you the battery percentage. Um, it shows you the voltage, the current going in and out. It also has the power button here with the communication ports. It also has two terminals instead of one terminal on each side. And the DC disconnect is really nice because it shuts off power to these terminals so it's safe to handle. Now, if you want to go with the more affordable option, they do have an option that has one terminal per side and it does not have the screen. That one comes in at $1,500. Now, both of these batteries are UL listed, so they are safe to have in your home. Now, I also purchased this EG4 48 volt uh, charger. Now, you plug this into a wall or into a generator, you can charge this battery. Uh, just connect to the positive negative terminal and charge at 1000 watts. So it's nice to have a high powered charger that's compatible with your 48 volt server rack battery. Now, if you are interested in checking out this battery or their other battery, I'll include links down in the video description. I've had a very good experience with this. Now, just FYI, there's a flat rate shipping charge of $250. So I paid that when I had this battery shipped to me, but Looking back, I should have bought three batteries and then that shipping would have been less per battery. So just FYI, that's a flat rate shipping charge whether you buy one battery or four batteries. So just keep that in mind if you go to purchase one of these batteries. Well guys, this has been a super fun video to test multiple power stations with 12 volt, 24 volt, and 48 volt batteries. So pretty interesting, you can use your own battery to extend the runtime on your power station, but I gotta get your guys' feedback. Which option would you prefer? Would you rather just purchase the expansion battery that's designed for the power station? You know, it's a little bit more money, but it is convenient and it kind of just is a seamless process. Or would you rather go with a DIY setup and just use a standalone battery to extend the runtime? So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And if you're already doing that, let me know what your setup is. Now I'll go ahead and recommend two other videos on my channel. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you guys want, check out those other videos. I think you'll like the content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.